he he's so disingenuous it, it's so hard to get through any of his content because he's just rapid fire just lies 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 Again, as established in a previous video, I literally cannot hear you. Sean, that's stupid. That's ridiculous. They would never pass a law saying something ridiculous like that. Except that's exactly what they're doing when it comes to other circumstances. So I can't imagine that this is too far off in the future. And to be clear... So we're going to just make a whole big stink about something that you are admitting is not happening. But then tack on at the end. Well, it could happen down. I could see how this could lead to that. This could just lead to just like rape, right? Just legalizing rape. That's what the, the, the inevitable outcome, this is the logical conclusion of this line of thinking, obviously. And he's so smug about it too, oh my god. Alright, let's, let's go, let's do some AJW. <sighs> we haven't talked about him in a while. Again, there can only be one Justice Warrior, and it will be me. It will. Right now in the United States of America, there is an unprecedented wave infecting this nation. We are experiencing pandemic levels of stupidity, and this stupidity is focused in and around our criminal justice system. Now, I want to be clear right off the bat, I am not talking about all forms of criminal justice reform. There are criminal justice reforms. Pinky, you remember uh, AJW. Actual Justice Warrior is the gentleman who basically said that Breonna Taylor was a, uh, a whore who was getting gang banged by uh, fucking drug dealers and she got killed because she was running in the wrong circles and all this shit was a lie and he was exposing all the myths and all that. Remember that guy? He was a fun one. Some of his chuds, I'm pretty sure, have made their way over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just probably a good thing that you did. <laughs> that I'm in favor of. I'm not big on the drug war. I would end the drug war because the drug war criminalizes activity with no apparent victim and we shouldn't be prosecuting victimless crimes because prosecuting victimless crimes ends up infringing on freedom and it distracts us from the stuff that we should be prosecuting. 20 bucks says that he considers himself a libertarian. All these fucking conservatives that call themselves libertarian. Like, they have all the same conservative values. They just want to be able to smoke weed and pop MDMA and shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. However, what we're talking about in terms of criminal justice reform is not related to the drug. Also, they want to be able to fuck hookers and shit, too. So they want to be able to fuck hookers and get high. Everything else they're fine with as far as conservatism goes. But they they just want to be able to fuck hookers and get high and have a guaranteed saucer, like a silver platter of boots to lick every single fucking night before bed. It's a routine. That's not the problem that needs to be addressed right now. What we're talking about are bad reforms that end up creating more problems than they actually solve and are just wrongheaded by nature that are being passed through our state legislatures. Also, he's fucking like he is so fucking grating. Like we're going to speed him up. Reasons that the exact policies that they're pushing are going to only make worse. And I could go across the board of the stupid policies. We're going to be focusing on Seattle, but just a few quick honorable mentions. In San Francisco, they passed something called the Karen Act, which makes it extra illegal to call 911 on a black or minority person if you're. Hey, someone else. Yes, this is that same guy. Yep, yep. This is the same dude who was defending Kyle Rittenhouse, that was defending the cops in the Breonna Taylor case, that was defending the cops in the George Floyd case. I dare you to find me a case of police brutality or police um 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 uh, overuse of force that actual justice warrior has covered where he didn't side with the fucking police i dare you to find me one <laughs> never just a chip with the cyber oh, get you're a white him. person get him. with bad intent even though that was already uh, also yeah um the title of this video is seattle to make crime legal so that's that's what he's going to yeah. Go ahead. Go get go ahead, AJW. Regale us.
legal, this will obviously have the effect of intimidating people from calling 911 when they definitely should. Many of these cases about people calling 911 on black people just living their lives are complete and utter nonsense. Whoa, 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 whoa. go back. Policies, whoa, what? We're going to be focusing on Seattle, but just a few quick honorable mentions. In San Francisco, they passed something called the Karen Act, which makes it extra illegal to call. Call 911 on a black or minority person if you're a white person with bad intent, even though that was already illegal. This will obviously have the effect of intimidating people from calling 911 when they definitely should. Many of these cases about people calling 911 on black people just living their lives are complete. What is he saying? Okay, okay, let's let let's play this out. Let's play this out. Let, let's let's do this. All right, we will have some theater. All right. <clears throat> uh scene one. <laughs> um I am a white woman leaving my local Walmart and in the parking lot, I see a black criminal thug beating a man, a, a, a man. He, he walks up to a man in an amigo who is slowly. Okay. Trader Joe's leaving my Trader Joe's. <laughs> and, and, and I see this black criminal thug beating a old man in an amigo he just pushed him right out of an amigo he didn't even take his items out of the cart and he just begins to viciously just pound on this this old white man because he's just a criminal thug he's probably high on drugs i can tell he was shirtless in this december and I frantically grab my purse and reach down, moving, frantically searching for my phone. And I grab it and I pull it out and I begin to dial nine, one, wait, wait, the Karen Act. If I call the police on this black man who is clearly committing a crime, they could say I'm doing it because I'm racist and I could be fined a thousand dollars and or go to jail for 30 days. I have to think about this. I only work part time. I may have to let this old man die. Huh? Wow. I'm sorry, sir. The risk is too high. The Karen Act might get me. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, like it, it gets so frustrating because I've said before, I don't think that AJW is dumb. I think he is highly intelligent, but he is disingenuous as fuck. And he uses all kind of just ridiculous ass hyperbole and in fucking what if scenarios that make absolutely no sense. Like, who, who is going to curb it? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. Go ahead. And utter nonsense. Some of them are just busybody neighbors that, you know, did something not cool, but not really something illegal. They didn't really have bad intent. And other of these cases are perfectly legitimate 911 calls that are framed racially, despite the fact that there's no racial motive. And had you been a different ethnic group doing the exact same thing as the person who called 911 saw, they probably would have called 911 on that person as well. Who? What? Examples. Please. Give me some. Something. Give me who, what, what, what calls where somebody was calling the police on somebody that was, you know, not white and it was valid and justified because they were actually committing a crime, but we racialized it and they somehow got out of the thing that they were being called on the police for. Like what, like what, give me one. Well. Needless to say, this will pass. It's going to have terrible downstream effects later in the future. But honestly, I'm ready to cut San Francisco off and push it out into the ocean anyway. And what I really want to talk about is Seattle. And Seattle, like many progressive places across this country, has had this idea that not enforcing laws is a good thing, even though this is ridiculous. But this time, they've decided to go one step further. But first, I'm going to go over... Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I just made a law that says it's illegal to be white. Do you still think that AJW would want to enforce that? Yeah, me neither.
<sighs> it smells like ass in San Francisco. <laughs> nice. Or some YouTube nonsense, and I promise I won't take up too much of your time. So I've noticed a couple of days after uploading a video that I'm losing subscribers for no apparent reason. I haven't uploaded a video that generated a ton of dislikes that should generate the loss in subscribers. I hope someone's been watching my content. I would like to, it's probably not, but I would like to believe I contributed to at least one of those unsubscribes, please. I would like to believe that. So it doesn't make any sense. So just remember to double check on my channel. I upload around 10 to 12 videos a month. If you don't see anything from me in a while, I know I did, I but I don't know enough people saw it, but still. Videos. YouTube is playing games with my channel, and I'm probably not that special. It's probably happening to other creators you think maybe just stop posting. Maybe they're still up, so check them too. Anyway, without further ado. Also, this is probably just bullshit because this is that shit that conservatives do all the time to get more traction. They'll be like, they're censoring my videos. They're, 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 they're uh, uh, shadow banning me. They, they, they don't want you to hear the truth. So go on over to my website and subscribe and you can in like, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the main topic of today's video. Seattle right now is considering legislation to basically formalize what they've been doing through the district attorney's office, and that is legalizing most misdemeanors in the municipality. Now, this is a terrible idea. And rather than go through all of the reasons, which we'll get to eventually. Yeah, right. Um, what? Le okay, first off, let, let him throw up the article because he's never going to cite the whole fucking thing. We just need to see what he's talking about and we'll go into it and we'll dig through ourselves. See, this is a terrible idea. I want to talk about because waiting on him to give you the correct information, we're going to die. That the city council is using in order to push through this proposed piece of legislation. And what they're trying to do is basically allow judges and juries to either dismiss or find people not guilty of certain misdemeanors as long as the judges or the juries are doing so because the person up for trial has either mental issues or is in poverty. <laughs> Remember what I said? Here, let's, here, we're gonna open another window. <clears throat> Remember what I said? About this video. Oh, fuck, where is it? Wait, why is it? Oh, wait, no, wait, why does he have two gives you channels? Diabetes. Do you think actual justice warrior got beat up by a cop and has now justified his terror of them into worship? You know? You may be on to something there, Iris. Thanks for the bits, too. <clears throat> you may be on to something there. Um, Let me see. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, where, where, where is it where is it where is it where is it this okay in his thumbnail his thumbnail says seattle to legalize almost all crime then seattle to make crime legal now we already have established that one this is only referring to misdemeanors and two it only applies to people who have a history of mental illness and or are in poverty. How the fuck do you get, how in the fuck do you get Seattle to legalize almost all crime and then say Seattle to make crime legal out of misdemeanors being, and it's not even saying they're just going to be dismissed outright. It's saying that the judge and jury have the option to dismiss them, the ability to. It's not even saying that they're just not even going to prosecute the shit. They saying that the judge and or jury has the ability to dismiss misdemeanors against mentally ill and homeless people. This is what I'm talking about. The high perp, like he, like this is just like the fucking um 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 uh, misgendering fucking bill in Canada. They will take something and blow it up into just absurd. Like I swear to God, if I go on Twitter right now and start looking for this shit, I will find people making talking points about like, oh Seattle's trying to make all crime legal. They just lie. 
And it's like, why are you lying? Why can't you just say the truth? Why? Because you don't want to seem like you're against homeless and mentally ill people going to jail for stealing? For like jaywalking? Like, what the fuck? Like, what? Like, literal fucking sociopaths. I swear to God, man. They're all fucking. Oh my God. All right, come on, bro. Come on. Uh, a proposal introduced during Seattle County's uh, budget deliberations is aimed to dramatically change that the proposal would allow judges and juries the option to dismiss misdemeanor crimes that were committed because of poverty or while a person was experiencing symptoms of mental illness or substance abuse disorder. Last week, it created fear and frustration among public safety advocates who say the idea, which had not yet been drafted by council staff as a bill, could in effect legalize most crime in Seattle. If most of your crime is being committed by poor and mentally ill people in his misdemeanors, it really sounds like y'all have a real hard time justifying the fucking amount of force that is used and the fucking access to military grade equipment that y'all deploy. Yeah, that's a problem. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, the reality is that often misdemeanor courts sweep people in, they're high volume, and often the people who are charged don't really understand what's happening to them. Um, now the director of Seattle University School of Law Defender Initiative. Uh, charges are really filed in misdemeanor court these days. And over the past 20 years, the overall number of misdemeanor cases in courts has shrunk even as the population has grown. But many of the functions that contribute to the cycling of poor people through misdemeanor courts remain consistent. Yeah, basically this whole video is going to be about how poor and mentally ill people deserve to go to jail. Basically, they're trying to legalize now. Now that we've established that those people, they're just Aladdin. If it wasn't for the fact that they were in poverty, they would be princes with heart of gold. And there's nothing that they could possibly do besides commit crime. Because Remember, we're talking about misdemeanors. OK, we're not talking about fucking like felonies and, and shit that gets you real fucking time. We're talking misdemeanors like not signaling in a lane change, jaywalking, shoplifting, fucking um 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 illegally parking. I don't know why it's so many traffic violations, but whatever. That's all I can think of at the top of my head. Um 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 like misdemeanor assault, like got into a fight with somebody. Like uh, all of this is about misdemeanors. This is what he's so angry about. Misdemeanors. Because again, all criminals are just Aladdin. Now, this is terrible for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't believe the limitations that the city. Of and that also gives you a peek into what he sees, like what to him is a criminal. If you're poor and you're stealing food to survive. He is ready to lump you in with fucking rapists and like child predators and shit like he would throw you in the same fucking lot with them in a heartbeat. Like, he, he's no differentiating at all because he's constantly, oh, they're a criminal, criminal, criminal. He, cri now, yes, if you committed a crime, you are technically a criminal if you've, you know, been tried and shit like that. But that's just how he sees people. They're all criminals. They're not troubled. They don't need help. They're criminals and we need to get them out of society in whatever way you want to take that if seattle is placing on this because they made it clear um i i um iris uh i don't watch trash so no <laughs> no i've seen a little bit of gotham but no i i, I wasn't a fan no that DWIs would not be covered under this, but I can make an argument if we're going to go with all criminals are right, right Pingy? With the circumstances of them being poor, that people who commit DWIs are probably disproportionately poor. You know how expensive Ubers are in the city of Seattle? You can't expect a poor person to spend 20 to $30 to not drive drunk, go home, and then spend that again to go back into the city of Seattle to get their car. Mm -hmm, yeah, I know who you're, you're talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. By not allowing drunk people to drive like crazy across the streets and freaking kill people with their drunk driving. Now you might be saying to yourself, or... Guys, guys, guys guys it's theater time again no we're not gonna do a whole bit um do, do you guys think that there would actually be a scenario where somebody was committing a dui and got into a car accident and killed someone and the judge and or jury would let them off because they were poor and or mentally ill do you think that would happen
Do you think there's any scenario where that would happen? Like they jump a curve and run over like 12 school children and shit. Do you think that that would go down like that? Me neither. But yet in AJW's imaginary world. This motherfucker thinks that they would just let you go. Because again, we have to focus on the fact that they have the option to dismiss a case. It is not, it is, we're just not going to fucking convict misdemeanors anymore. Like, it, this is so dumb. Uh, yeah, I would think so, but I don't know. Like, uh, DUI, uh, I don't know. This is all pretend outrage. We have no data support the outcome happening that way. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. And I just love how, yeah, it's like, oh, let's just say that they did just like wipe the slate clean as far as like DUIs and shit. It's like, well, um, everybody's just going to start drinking and driving now. Like what? Like, I don't think any more or less people would do it, whether it's illegal. No one, no one. Okay. When you're at the bar with your friends, no one ever says like, Hey, Tom, You've been drinking a lot. Maybe you shouldn't drive. You could get a fine and or go to jail. No one ever says that. The scare tactic that people use to keep you from drinking and driving is like, hey, motherfucker, you might go out there and die or kill someone else. Don't be stupid. No one is not drinking and driving because they're worried about being fined. They're not drinking and driving because they don't want to kill themselves and or someone else. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. And we might talk about the Nashville thing, too. But okay, go ahead. Continue, AJ. I'm sorry. I, we're not even five minutes in, but he he just, he he's so disingenuous. It, it's so hard to get through any of his content because he's just rapid fire, just lies, 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 lies. Again, as established in a previous video, I literally cannot hear you. Sean, that's stupid. That's ridiculous. They would never pass a law saying something ridiculous like that, except that's exactly what they're doing when it comes to other circumstances. So I can't imagine that this is too far off in the future. And to be clear, so we're going to just make a whole big stink about something that you are admitting is not happening, but then tack on at the end. Well, it could happen down or I could see how this could lead to that. This could just lead to just like rape, right? Just legalizing rape. That's what the, the, the inevitable outcome. This is the logical conclusion of this line of thinking, obviously. And he's so smug about it, too. Oh, my God. Clear. While that sounds really bad, what they're doing now or what they're proposing now is really bad already. You don't even have to get to that point for things to be ridiculous. Excusing possibly, possibly excusing misdemeanors on homeless and mentally ill people. That's so wrong. These people deserve to die. Just take them out back and shoot them all in the back of the fucking head. Jesus Christ. Like one of the things that Seattle has decided to do is basically decriminalize shoplifting. Because, you know, a lot of people that are shoplifting, they're just people in poverty, man. Like they can't help it. And Let's go over this. Third degree theft. One of the top charges pursued by the Seattle city attorney often resulted in jail for homeless defendants who could be charged with small amounts of stolen and returned merchandise from Goodwill. Actual justice warrior wants to put homeless people in jail for stealing clothes from the goodwill. Also, returned merchandise as well. Do you know most here? Let me tell you a secret. As somebody who works in retail, <clears throat> do you know 99% of shoplifting cases are never prosecuted, even if they catch them? The company does not <laughs> see that's the beauty of capitalism because we make most things overseas with slave labor and then import it here and sell it at highly marked up fucking prices to what it costs the company to, you know, manufacture said good item product that retailers don't even give a shit when you steal it it doesn't even matter it costs them so little to have it made they don't even care in most cases you would have to steal thousands like tens of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise for them to even 
consider prosecuting you or you would have to be a habitual shoplifter again and again and again and again and again then maybe they'll prosecute you but believe me as someone who has worked retail for the better part of their adult life they don't care the retailers don't care they almost never prosecute i know for a fact they don't so don't even like go down this line of thought like oh they're just gonna make shoplifting it's already legal now they're not going to fucking prosecute you. If you don't take under, if you don't take over a certain amount, it's already a misdemeanor. And unless you take a whole bunch, they're not even going to fucking send the cops after you. Do you think mall security gives a fuck about shot? Really? What, what, what that roided up, um, ex fucking sniper that works at Walmart and shit thinks that he's still in Iraq. Yeah. That asshole might be on some other shit, but for the most part, they don't care. It's already legal. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's survival at that point, Pingy. Right. <clears throat> um, small amount of stolen return merchandise. Uh, jail stays are usually short, and the time spent inside can destabilize a person's life even more. Uh, for the people, the proposal would target those who are homeless or in jeopardy of it. Jail stays often in missed work missed rent or returning to stolen belongings and setting off a cycle of needing basic necessities they can't afford outcomes also differ by race according to the analysis of monetary sanctions imposed by the seattle municipal court published this summer black men and women are much more likely than other groups to serve jail time for unpaid fines and fees and even when they do pay court imposed penalties black men and women are more likely to be sentenced and incarcerated through a superior court now I wanted to read all that because I know he won't. So go ahead. And they're just shoplifting because again, they're all Aladdin and they need to get bread in order to feed their families. You can't criminalize people for doing stuff when they're in an economically disadvantaged position. How many stupid times have I heard this before? Except this ridiculous idea that all criminals are Aladdin or the ridiculous assumption that is underlying the idea that all criminals are Aladdin. Why? Who is saying this besides you? Who is saying this? And yes, yes, bitch. If you are in an economic position to where you are literally hanging by a thread of life and death or losing your home or going into lifelong debt, then yes, I would steal. You would steal. You'd probably kill if you had to. Don't pretend that that is somehow unreasonable unfathomable to you because this is all assuming they are doing all the things that is within their ability to try and get out of this situation in any other fashion and it's not working they don't care about you they they would see you dead they don't if you're poor that is a moral failing on your part and you deserve to die that is that that is fuck the hot take shit that is the truth if you are not successful you don't deserve life period Aladdin is the idea that crime is driven by poverty when the exact opposite is true. Poverty is driven by crime. Crime is a huge factor in poverty in this nation, not the other way around. Think about it like this. We used to What? Okay, now you're getting way out of your depth because I know you're not a fucking sociologist. So please, please explain to me how poverty is not a direct driver of crime. The kind of crime we're talking about all crime? Of course not. Absolutely not. There's white collar crime all the fucking time. Yes, we're all aware of that. But the kind of crime we're talking about, violent crime. Tell me that that is not an outcrop of, of poverty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Preach. Preach, brother. Preach to be much, much poorer in this nation. And we also used to have, at different periods of time, varying levels of crime. For instance, in the 1950s, the murder rate among black people in this nation was going down. In the We are told that such riots are the result of black poverty and white racism, but in fact, for those who still have some respect for facts, black poverty was far worse and white racism was far worse prior to 1960, but violent crime within black ghettos was far less. You cannot take any people of any color and exempt them from the requirements of civilization without ruinous consequences to them into the society at large. 
Murder rates among black males were going down, repeat down during the much lamented 1950s, while it went up after the much celebrated 1960s. Um, guys, guys, are we going to pretend that nothing happened in the 60s on forward that would have increased the murder rate in this country of black males? Like, like drugs, gangs, no the proliferation of a black market the war on drugs no we're gonna pretend like none of that shit happened okay go ahead go ahead i'm not really sure what the fuck they mean by the requirements of civilization i'm not sure with that either um uh reaching levels more than double what they had been before most black children were raised in two-parent families prior to 1960s uh but today the great majority of black children are raised in one-parent families i do so we're not even gonna even address why we even think that is okay Oh, it's definitely racist. Um, such trends are not unique to blacks, nor even to the United States. The welfare state has led to remarkably similar trends among the white underclass in England over the same period. Just read Life at the Bottom by Theodore, whoever, a British physician who worked in a hospital in a white slum neighborhood. Um, I'm really curious why he's not citing what this is. Because I got a feeling this is some far right white supremacist extremist ass fucking source just by a lot of this shit. Yeah, that they say him. You cannot take any people of any color and exempt them from the requirements of civilization without ruinous consequences to them and society at large. What are the requirements of civilization that black people are not being held up to? 1960s that same murder rate among that same demographic of people despite the fact that they were significantly wealthier than they were in the 50s was going up dramatically if crime were a product of poverty we would expect those statistics to be inverted and for those of you who are like well discrimination is what's driving the crime rate because people are oppressed and that's why they're disproportionately committing crimes because systemic what is happening i'm not doing this this is him this is in the edit this is in the video what is he doing right now? Racism that's calling systemic poverty, blah, 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 blah. And again, if that were true, then how come the 30 years prior to the Civil Rights Act? What? Well, discrimination is what If crime were a product of poverty, we would expect those statistics to be inverted. And for those of you who are like, well, discrimination is what's driving the crime rate because people are oppressed and that's why they're disproportionately committing crimes because systemic racism that's calling systemic poverty, blah, 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 blah. And again. Also, I, lo I like how we're going to pretend like. <clears throat> um. Black wealth because they're not talking about income they're talking about wealth we're we're in we're just going to pretend that like more black people owned homes during that time and it has progressively sharply dropped off during you know from the 60s going forward as the crime rates and stuff were increasing and the incarceration rates for black men were going up we're not gonna we're gonna pretend like that has nothing to do with the single parent households and shit no okay all right cool or 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 poor people having less access to the contraceptives and shit like that we're going to pretend like none of that factors into this either okay cool cool because we're going to pretend like a, a a upper middle class white kid who gets some girl pregnant can't afford to go have that girl get an abortion or um or to like buy him condoms or get her birth control yeah no okay Again, if that were true, then how come the 30 years prior to the Civil Rights Act being passed actually had less criminality amongst the black Americans who were being actively discriminated against by law, no question about it, than the 30 years after the Civil Rights Act in which crime went up? Gangs. The war on drugs. What the fuck are you talking about? Yes. Obviously, crime is not driven by either one of these factors. However, poverty can... Obviously, it's like you can't just make some anecdotal fucking you know limerick and then just go like see obviously it's not true like for him to say he's so about data and facts and all this shit it's like he like nothing nothing and no site it's like description maybe does he cite anything nope just a bunch of shit teespring store parlors patreon paypal venmo just give me money 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 uh sources uh proposal breakdown crime and poverty high prices low profits okay walmart info long-term cost of riots what okay 
can be driven. And then also, I love how didn't he go to law school? He got this fair use notice down here like this shit means anything like this means anything. He seriously people put this shit. This doesn't mean anything. Oh, my God. Like he, Oh, boy. OK. All right. Go ahead, bro. Holy shit. I can never take your opinion on anything legal seriously ever again. Holy shit. Or worsened by crime. Now, we all know that this is true. We know that market economies are what <laughs> lift people out of poverty. We know that you need strong rule of law and private property protections in order to have a flourishing market economy. It might be inconvenient for some politically to acknowledge that this is true, or it might be difficult for some people personally to acknowledge that this is true, but this is not something that's in dispute in anybody's mind in this nation. However, you might want a concrete example, something to think about in order to better contextualize and understand this idea. And you know me, I've liked a lot of simple examples lately, so that's what we're going to go with. Let's say that somebody at a store in a neighborhood is selling an item for 25 cents. Now, out of this 25 cents, only one cent of the 25 is this person's profit. Now, if one person out of every 25 people who buy this item steal this item, that completely wipes out that store owner's profit that... If there was an item <clears throat> that you sold that only netted you a 1% profit, you wouldn't fucking sell it. No one would. In a market economy, why would you sell something that makes you that little profit? The cost is way too high to you. Because even if, it, even if you're not accounting for shoplifting, things get broken, things get lost. Things are damaged when you receive them. You have to factor that in to your fucking profits. Your overhead costs, all that shit has to be accounted into that. You would never sell... Oh. Look, folks, I don't know what's wrong with white people. I'm worried that... <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. Like I'm trying here. I'm really fucking trying, but this is so asinine. He's like, well, let's just say if you sold this for a quarter and you may want, if one that person out of every 25 took that, you wouldn't have any profit. Again, I just explained to y'all, they don't even fucking prosecute shoplifters 99% of the time. Anyone who works in retail can tell you that anyone. <sighs> you got a bad case of German. Nice. I'm so sorry. I can't do anything for you, Pengy. Sorry. We 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 stopped doing eugenics. We we haven't figured out the secrets to separate you yet, but one day. <laughs> he made on that item. Meaning that in order for this store owner to compensate for things like shoplifting, he is going to have to raise prices on all of his customers to cover the cost of even the smallest amounts of theft when you compare it to the overall sales to theft margins. Now, the reason... Why would you use this as an example? The only way this example works is if no one ever steals anything ever, nothing ever gets lost in transit, nothing ever gets broken at the store, nothing ever gets miscounted during inventory. Like, like the... the I know he tried to simplify his analogy, but he just made it worse. The reason I use this example is because there is a ton of buzz about how poor people in poor neighborhoods are actually paying more in the local stores that they shop in because they're located in their neighborhoods. And this yeah. is often portrayed as some great... Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. ...perpetuating against the poor people in their community. However, these studies typically stop right there. Poor people are paying higher prices, it's immoral, and then later on they'll start justifying all the Aladdins that are stealing from these stores. But while it might be convenient to portray these local store owners in these areas as greedy capitalists that are just extracting money from the poor, what is often overlooked is that these same stores that are charging more per item than other areas and wealthier neighborhoods are often making less profits they have lower margins okay let's see <clears throat> yeah he is a sociopath for decades one of the biggest blind spots of most civil rights leaders and spokesmen for the black community has been their utter attack of lack of knowledge of economics uh prices in fact do tend to be higher and the quality of service and products lower in stores in low-income neighborhoods but the knee-jerk assumption that this represents exploitation or racism ignores economics uh, many of the ghetto stores charging high prices are struggling to survive, while supermarkets in other neighborhoods are very profitable charging lower prices. Okay. Okay. So he just, okay, he just undid his own fucking argument. Okay, okay, okay. This is what you cite 
this is what you cite he's like no no no. see no no you don't understand they're not uh, charging these poor people in these minority neighborhoods more because they're racist and, and being exploitative it's because they can't compete with the superstore who is exploiting and profiting off the suffering of other people in a third world country that is producing this shit for slave labor that they are selling at markdown prices that they're still making massive profits on because of how little they have to spend in labor. Wow. That sounds like capitalism is the problem here, don't it? That's weird. You can't make the argument that capitalism isn't the issue for that they're evil capitalists for why they're exploiting these black people in these poor neighborhoods. But it's the other capitalism that's exploiting the black and brown people in other countries that makes this store able to sell their goods at much lower prices than these stores. Okay. Cool. Cool, bro. Cool. There are many reasons for this. One reason is that crime, shoplifting, vandalism, and riots have raised the cost, both directly by causing insurance rates and the cost of security to be higher. Security? My nigga, what? I have been to many a motherfucking liquor store, okay, in my life. I done bought many a Swisher Sweet wraps at a fucking party store. Don't tell security. What, the fake cameras that they got in there? Really? Are you saying that Walmart doesn't have cameras? They literally pay people called asset protection. They're like rent-a-cops that follow you around the store in plain clothes and tackle you when you're trying to steal a fucking microwave out of Walmart. Like what? But 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 the local liquor store. The reason is is because of crime. Really? Insure really. Really, if, if it costs you that much money to be insured in the area that you had to mark your items up that high and make that little profit off it, wouldn't you just set up shop somewhere else? Like, you don't have to have a business in a neighborhood. Like, if you have the means to run a business, start and run and maintain a business, then you have the means to go somewhere else. Oh, but that's right. The white people in middle class suburbia wouldn't like it if a bunch of liquor stores just started popping up on every fucking street corner, would they? Like, they actually, like, get their neighborhoods together and advocate to keep those things out. You know, like things that they, you know, think are bad, like strip clubs and liquor stores and shit like that. Hell, there's whole dry counties in this country where you can't even buy alcohol on Sundays. But, yeah, no, that's the reason. The reason that they're evil capitalists to the black and brown people in the hood is because another bigger evil capitalist is evil to black and brown people in other countries. And that's why they have to fuck you over. But it's totally not capitalism. That's not the problem at all. Totally. <sighs> the security is a store owner asking you to leave. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Go ahead, bro than those other stores that are charging less. And there are a number of reasons for this, economies of scale, and a lot of things that I don't want to get into. But one of the driving factors in these poor crime-ridden areas that are raising prices is exactly what I was talking about. They are paying- I, 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 I'm curious why you don't want to get into the supermarket um, being very profitable and charging lower prices. I'm wondering, it's curious why you don't want to talk about that, but you do want to talk about this crime, shoplifting, and vandalism, right? Also, I, I mean, I can just say shit, too. I mean, I don't have to say... I can just say things, too. Actual Justice Warrior has a little dick. I can just say things without actually having to prove any of this shit. Yeah. Because every American city across the entire country... And I don't mean major city. I mean city. Population over, like, a thousand people or so. Has, um... Riots right every city in this country is right that's why all the party stores are so expensive riots mm. okay
in the cost of the shoplifting of the few people who are committing crimes in their communities. And it's not just the theft that goes into the higher prices and lower profit margins that can be. Right, the liquor store next to the pawn shop, next to the cash for gold, next to the three different smoke shops. Thank you, Pingy. Thank you. See, shit like this, you can always tell when someone's never had a life experience before. When people talk about like, oh, well, if they give all these people the extra $600 on unemployment, they won't go back to work. These are people who've never been on employment before and don't understand that if you refuse to go back to your employer after they ask you to come back, they'll just cut you off fucking unemployment. You don't get to just sit and just get to keep collecting the shit. That is spoken by someone who's never been on unemployment and has never known anyone that's been on unemployment. Also, when you see shit written like this and hear people talk like this, these are people who have never been to the ghetto in their life. They've never been to a neighborhood where the average income was under like $70,000 ever. <laughs> ever i promise you convenience store owners charge in these crime ridden poor communities if there's a vandalism problem then the cost of getting rid of that vandalism is also priced in if the employer has insurance which you have to have in order to operate a business the higher insurance premiums are also being priced in if the employer is borrowing money all the theft that's going on in the store and the lower profit margins make it a riskier loan so there are again you can't just say that someone is having so much shrink in their product that it is offsetting their profit margins. I love how we've gone from shoplifting from the Goodwill to just local mom and pop party stores and shit. Like they are on two completely different ends of the business spectrum. They are not even in the same fucking world. Supermarkets, ret clo uh, clothing retailers, all that shit. They have like larger parent companies and shit and are a part of like a franchise and shit like that are not comparable to the fucking cash for gold store. That's not, no, they don't even operate in the same universe. The only relation to them is that they are both businesses that no. Like, do you think that Walmart and, and the guy at the fucking liquor store have the same amount of fucking shoplifting? Like, in actual foot traffic and or in dollars and cents? Like, come on, man. Or higher interest rates being charged to that store owner in order to operate in that community. Also, there's a limit to what the store owner can charge because remember, these are localized price differences. If these price differences get too great that they incentivize people in order to go into other places where, you know, wealthier places where the price of goods. Yeah, because I totally feel comfortable when I leave the projects and drive like an hour and a half to like the fucking burbs and shit and go shopping at they fucking um trader joe's like yeah i totally i when i go from fucking save a lot to trader joe's i totally feel welcome there and not suspected of stealing some shit or or like socially just felt outcasted from just even being there yeah i know right and then plus two but but but, but then his argument would also have to take into account Okay, how far is the next town where I can get these goods and services cheaper? There is still a cost to me in time and maintain maintenance of my car, gas. Like, th this shit doesn't exist in a vacuum. Like, he's real quick to, to play out all the nuances. Oh, well, if crime is high in the area, insurance costs are worked into the cost of the goods. And if there's, you know, a, a, a lot of shoplifting, that's worked into it and this, that, and the other. But then when he talks about, oh, you can just go to a, a totally different neighborhood and just buy it cheaper. Like, is it really cheaper after the mileage you put on your car for the future repairs that you're going to have to do and the gas that you had to, the extra gas that you had to consume to drive back and forth to this place? Is it really cheaper in the end? No. In most cases, no. The extra time, which is invaluable to you, that you've wasted doing this, is that cheaper in the end? No. Is lower because theft is lower overall in those places, then that could drive this person out of business. So some of the theft is just straight up being absorbed by the store owner in those lower profit margins. Now, the reason I'm focusing on a small convenience store as an example is twofold. One, people tend for some reason to be more sympathetic to the small business owner than they do to the multinational corporation. And two, a small example can help you understand when this pattern is repeated, why some big box stores. Wait, sorry, I was reading chat. Wait, one more time. 
twofold. One, people tend, for some reason, to be more sympathetic to the small business owner than they do to the multinational corporation. And two, a small example can help you understand when this pattern is repeated, why some big box stores don't even bother to open up in high crime areas. Because a lot of big box stores end up gaining their market share through incredibly low prices to their consumers. And they actually have, despite the scale of their company, incredibly small profit margins, something like 2%, but 2%. Here's one way to put Walmart's 3.12 uh, profit margin perspective. Over a typical 31-day period, like the month of March, for example, Walmart generates about $40.5 in sales revenue, roughly $1.3 billion per day. To generate that amount of sales, it costs Walmart about $39.3 billion every 31 days to pay for all of its expenses. Merchandise to stock at stores, shipping expenses, the cost of labor, including fringe benefits, utilities, corporate income taxes, property taxes, payroll taxes, interest. Uh, after incurring all of those costs to provide the merchandise for consumers over a 31 day period, there's about 1.26 billion left over for profits, which also 3.12% of the 40.5 billion sales revenue. What point is he making here? of $500 billion in sales is a significant amount of profit. If you're a big box store or a grocery store chain and you can operate your business due to economies of scale on 1% to 3% profit margins, that only works if you live in an area where the crime is low enough for it not to eat into those margins. If you're going- No, 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 no. You went from a 1% profit margin to a 3.1% profit margin that Walmart is, is making. Like, and plus you can't compare, okay. Okay, okay. I'm like, you can't just say, this is what Walmart's profit margin is compared to all these other expenses, and then this is what this smaller store, it's like, you, you can't, we don't even know, he's not even using an, an example of the smaller store, he's just saying it, like, yeah, like, these are comparable, yeah, yeah, totally. Going to locate even after he says that they're not comparable. He's like, but you can use it as an example, though. Place where the insurance is going to cut into that margin, where the cost of extra security is going to cut into that margin, where the cost of interest. Where is this extra this security? It's like he's location. just saying shit. You can't just say shit and then it's like, and I'm right. Show me the average cost of security for one of these fucking small stores. Like, you. You can't, most of them don't have security. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Is going to cut in and eat up all those margins. You just don't open up in those locations. And when they don't open there and choose to go somewhere else, that's actually- And then to go off on this tangent about shoplifting when this whole thing is about fucking misdemeanors and shit in general, it's like, you just want to punish poor people for being poor. Like, that's all this is about. You just want to punish them for being poor, for existing. Maybe the cashier has a pistol, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm, I don't know. I, I don't know what the stats are on shoplifting, to be honest. I, I would actually be interested um, if anybody finds it to look at it. But I, I don't know, like, the breakdown of, like, race and, like, male to female age group. I don't know that profitable or the businesses that are located there relocate to somewhere that's actually profitable or the businesses that are there can't raise their prices enough in order to compensate for the higher levels of criminality and they go out of business you can't be surprised that there's no jobs there you can't be surprised that these areas become depressed dilapidated areas and this is all stemming from higher rates of just shoplifting not to mention all the other crimes that are significantly higher that drive up all the costs of doing business that we were talking about earlier so what the seattle city council is proposing here is not despite what they claim sympathetic to the poor in fact if you were to design a piece of legislation to stick it to and hurt the poor intentionally, it wouldn't be as good as what the city of Seattle is proposing by allowing all these petty crimes that they think don't really matter to go unpunished, thus incentivizing them, thus leading to a higher rise in those crimes. Or criminal How though, bro? Man, it's not just wiping the slate clean, man. The judge and or jury has the option to, oh my god. It's like just even the possibility that they could let this go. He's already like, it's, it's going to increase crime. Like, oh my God. Criminals are not Aladdin. They're not stealing bread for their family or the little neighborhood orphan kids who can't afford to feed themselves. They're not Robin Hood stealing from the rich to give to the poor. In fact, if you make $7,500 a year, you are significantly more likely to be robbed than somebody who makes $50,000 a year. Criminals keep people in poverty. Of all the nonsense. Well, yeah. No shit, because if you make $7,500 a year, you live in a fucking ghetto. What is he talking? No shit. 
Like, no fucking shit. Everyone around you is poor. If you make $50,000 or more, you're not living in the fucking hood like that. What the fuck? These people talk about how the 1% are holding people down. The 1% are keeping the poor poor and taking everything for themselves. You would think that they would be able to understand this concept. The 1% that's robbing people in poor communities isn't the wealthy people. That's not how you get rich in this country. You don't take money from people who don't have any money. The 1% that's actually the problem is the criminal population in these communities. The same population that the city of Seattle is passing legislation in favor of in order to protect the very people that are being <sighs> Let him get through it. Criminal. Just let him get through it. Car insurance fraud and bad drivers are the driving force of increased auto insurance premiums, not the evil auto insurance company personally hating you and targeting you to extract money from you. These are the people yeah. that are raising the cost okay. of living for people in poverty Go across ahead. this nation. Anyway, those are just my thoughts, and I could, I guess, be wrong about this. I'm definitely not. Don't get me wrong. But maybe some of you out there believe that the city of Seattle's council has figured something out about how legalizing crime actually does help the poor. And if you think that... Is he is he doing a call out to correct him on this right now? Please tell me that's what this is. Please tell me that's what this is. Please tell me that's what's about to happen. No, let him slow down. Go to regular speed. Please tell me that's what's about to happen. Please, please, please. He's so fucking smug. I know I'm not wrong. I could be, but I'm not like, he, oh, my God. Let's be wrong about this. I'm definitely not. Don't get me wrong. But maybe some of you out there believe that the city of Seattle's council has figured something out about how legalizing crime actually does help the poor. And if you think that, I'd love to read and laugh at your ridiculous argument down in the comments below. Okay, no, you like this video no, 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 never mind. He's going to respond once and then I'm going to blow his asshole out and then he's not going to fucking respond anymore. Nope, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. You can't legalize crime by definition. Exactly right. Never mind. He he'll 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 never. No, no, never mind. Well, that was fucking stupid. Holy shit.